Whilst we were competing at the Le Mans 24 hour cat race in 2006, Russell Crowe spoke to me about an idea he had to try and create a new world record for the greatest distance to be covered by a motor powered cart in 24 hours. The current record back then stood at 1,709 kilometres or 1,062 miles and was held by a four man team and was set at Kirkistown in Ireland. Russell had a burning desire to beat this record and a good idea on what needed to be done to achieve it. Over the coming months, Russell researched everything including the rules and regulations that would need to be strictly adhered to in order to make the new record valid and to ensure that it would be ratified by the powers to be at the Guinness World Records. This included no less and no more than four drivers, each driver to do no more than one hour driving stints, each driver had to do the same amount of driving, the engine could not be more than 160cc. It made sense to do the record attempt at the track where the original record had been set, but due to noise restrictions and nighttime running, this would not be possible. A different and suitable track would need to be found and had at least the same amount of corners and would need to be measured for distance, videoed and ratified by the official in order for it to stand and be officially recorded. The team would decide on utilising one more corner than required in order to make sure we did not fall foul of the regulations. Bob Pope of Teesside Karting now comes into the story and he kindly offers his services. The track is therefore decided, the date for the test would be 13th of September 2007 and the world record run would take place over the 19th to the 20th of September the same year. Russell decided on using a 2006 Tony Cat EVS chassis to the ICC specification, front and rear braking system and the unusual choice of a two-stroke Honda CR125cc motocross engine rebought to 140cc and expected to produce an estimated 43 horsepower coupled to a five-speed gearbox. This would be the first time this type of engine had been used in the cart and all fabrication to make it fit and work would be the brainchild of Russell Crowe. As far as to who the drivers would be, this proved to be an easy choice. Russell decided to use Joe Flay, Simon Rudd, Tom Huxwell and of course Russell himself. All drivers regularly raced together as part of the very, success, the very successful the Keep the Test car team who specialised in endurance car racing and had an immense amount of experience in 24 hour races. This is the story of that weekend and the world record attempt. First test day, Rye House, Hertfordshire, before the world record attempt. Mm -hmm. Firstly, the cart looks very purposeful and the standard of preparation by Russell is simply fantastic, with all the fabricated parts and detail in all very professional indeed. This would be the first time the cart would run in anger, as the first time it was driven had been by Russell on his drive in Kent. The cart was started up and I think it was fair to say that anyone in your shop turned around as the engine out is fantastic. Each driver took his turn in the cart leaving the pit lane with black tyre marks left all over the tarmac. There was a lot of puddles of water on the track at all the crucial apexes, however for the first few laps you had so much to concentrate on, for example, for example gear changing and getting used to the stopping power of the front and rear brakes, that you did not have time to put the cart on the optimum racing line. This did not seem to matter as the cart had so much grunt. The acceleration of the cart is phenomenal and is definitely the quickest cart I have ever driven. Saying that, we did not have the right gear in on the cart and we were only able to use three of the five gears available. It took a few laps to get used to the hand clutch and the gears but it all seemed to come together after a little practice. The cart is very quick and although we were not really going for a lap time, as this test was to learn about the characteristics of the cart and to iron out any small problems that are about to come to light. I think it is fair to say that you cannot help yourself trying to obliterate anything else that is circulating on the track. We ran the car for the test with a standard engine, the record the 10th engines will have approximately another 4 to 5 horsepower. We tried the car shot with Beagle Rubber which were well warm before we started. We slapped it aside on the tyres for the event. However our quickest lap time was in the high 30 second bracket and showed real promise. The major issue for me being the largest driver is the seat position and the close proximity of the engine to my elbow. I already have the bruise and swelling to show for it. However this is in hand and is probably sorted out by now knowing Russell's efficiency. Body armour has been ordered from eBay and everything will be on hand and prepared for the next test, which will be at Teesside. Russell Crowe and Joe Flay arrived at the awesome Teesside Catholic circuit and prepared to unpack the kit ready for the first test. I think both myself and Russell were slightly apprehensive due to the length of the straight and we both wondered what would be our terminal speed and average lap time. Before we had a chance to get the cat on the track, the press arrived and a good hour was lost on the motor shoot. However, it will all be good fun listening. We tried the cat on Maxi's HG1 tyres that we used in the Rotax Maxi Jewelry Championship and these proved to give lots of grip. 
whilst we know they are very good for longevity, we guesstimate we could do the event on possibly six sets. The practice engine which we used first seemed to be a bit down on par, but after changing the gearing twice, it was only a second off the pace from the first race engine. Although I would have to say that we were not really going for an all on lap time, the best time was a low 46 second lap which was very promising, as we used the full 1.3 km track. This included a very slow first gear left-hander that goes up the hill and eventually leads back onto the straight. Terminal speed before the break in air at the end of the back straight was a little over 100 mile an hour. The car performed faultlessly throughout the day, with most of the right house issues resolved. There is still a lot of work to be done, however the final shakedown will be next Wednesday. Paul Russell, who was doing most of the preparation work and design of the car, did not finish until gone 3 a.m. prior to the test. He then had to pick me up at 5 a.m. to leave for Teesside. Top man Russell, 110% commitment. One of the first things we've done when we arrived at Teesside Carter Circuit was to measure the track. This was to ensure that if we were to break the record, there would be no arguments about how long the track would be and how far we could travel. We used one of Bob Pope's uh, corporate carts with Tom Huxwell driving and Simon Rudd on the measuring wheel. Uh, and the track measured just over 1,200 meters. We decided to use one of Bob Pope's corporate cats to film the circuit. Uh, I drove the pro cat and we had Phil Rudd sitting on the back of the cat with a high definition professional camera just filming as we were going along. Uh, considering he was sitting on the back of the cat, hence the movement of the camera as, as travel around the track. This probably wasn't one of my greatest ideas, um, but this was the days before onboard cameras and the sophisticated, sophisticated stuff you have today. Um, but it all seemed to be working quite well. As you can see the track was a little bit damp in places. Um, this is coming up to the bottom bend, which is a heavy braking area. Quite quick but obviously we were going a lot slower than being in a corporate car and the fact that we had Phil Rudd sitting on the back holding on for dear life. Um, this is the straightaway. We would be using this um, chicane on the right hand side but I decided to travel straight through uh, and this is where it all went a little bit wrong really. Um, as we came into this left hander, all a little bit too quick. My apologies for all right. Six o'clock in the morning, world record day. Everything's prepared, the cat is looking quite purposeful, sitting on its cat stand. All oiled up, fueled, and ready to go at nine o'clock. We set up a mechanics bay uh, and our two mechanics. Peter Hammond and Bob Scott are just doing a few bits and pieces in readiness for, our, for the off. Um, we've got the press here again this morning, both BBC and ITV and local radio. And they're going to be interviewing Russell in a few moments. So he's just going to take the cart on a couple of exploration laps and we'll be ready to rock.
goes off in twists and turns. Next to me, as you were hearing in the background, but they've now turned off the engine, is the go-kart, where hopefully a world record will be made with this. It's white, it's got plastic bumpers, it's got world record attempt written on it, and the man in it, uh, dressed in a Formula One style boiler suit, is someone with a very interesting name, Russell Crowe, and he's the man in a four-man team to take part in this world record attempt. Good morning, Russell. Good morning. Okay, so tell me about this world record attempt. What exactly are you trying to do? Well, there's an existing uh, record in the Guinness Book of Records for the greatest distance covered in 24 hours in a motor-powered car on an outdoor circuit. And uh, I just got this idea that maybe it would be an idea to, uh, to beat it. So um, this sort of started about six months ago and we've been putting the uh, work in to get this car ready for, uh, for a very serious attempt on it. We should do it, I hope. Okay, and what have you got to beat? 1,709.9 kilometres. Wow, so I mean, how confident are you? That's, that's a long distance. Uh, yeah, we're pretty confident. The uh, weather may play a factor. The forecast isn't particularly good. And uh, if, it's, if it's dry, we should do it comfortably. OK, I mean, the car you're sitting in, you're very low to the ground. It, it's tiny, actually. Um, you're going to be going speeds of 100 miles an hour. How dangerous is that? Uh, it's not dangerous unless you hit anything. Um, the track has got decent runoff areas. It's reasonably safe. Um, if you leave the circuit, yeah, it can be a bit dangerous. Obviously, you don't want to hit any of the barriers or anything like that. But generally speaking, it's uh, it's reasonably safe. I'm sure my wife would be pleased to hear that. <laughs> yeah, well, the the good thing about the circuit is it's uh, it's quite wide and open with long straights, so the, it doesn't actually feel as uh, as as bad as it um, as it might sound. You know, 100 mile an hour here. Um, it's not, it's not too bad, but you know, it takes a little bit of getting used to. <laughs> it's, um, I don't know, it's, it's maybe stupidity, just uh, the desire to, uh, to do something different. We've got a lot of experience in racing 24-hour races, and um, this just seemed like a, a natural progression. That sounds really stupid, but it's, um, it's something you know I, I really wanted to do. So. Okay, so you're going to be doing this in one hour stint. It's going to be pretty hard to keep your concentration going at those speeds, isn't it? Yes, it's a lot harder than in a race where you've got other carts to concentrate on. Like, so it's, it's really about just focusing on consistency, not making mistakes, not damaging the car, obviously. Um, so yes, it will be quite tough. <laughs> I'll give it a go. We'll take his uh, headphones yeah. off and put the helmet on. Lovely white helmet. Just put it on his head now. Just a few demonstration laps now. Using the using the cut through on the short circuit just so that the radio station can pick up the sound of the cart. And then we'll be ready to be off at nine o'clock. Coming up to nine o'clock, and Bob Pope is ready with the Union Jack to get the world record underway. Here we go.
so as you can see the track has not completely dried out and it's still quite slippery. circulates, Tom Huxmall prepares for his first stint. It's quite noisy down here, I'm by next to the black car line trap in front of me. It's like a mini Formula One course, lots of twists and turns around grassy mounds, and it's bordered by hundreds of black tyres. As you can hear in the background, the go-kart keeps coming around, it's reaching speeds of about 100 miles an hour. It set off around about 20 minutes ago now, and the occasion was officially marked by the waving of a Union Jack flag. I'm joined now by Joe Fell, who's dressed in a metallic blue boiler suit. He's part of the uh, four-man team in this 24-hour stint. Good morning, Joe. Good morning. So, Russell's in the uh, go-kart game behind us now. He's doing very, very well, really, considering the conditions. It's still very, very damp out there, so he's about six or seven seconds off the pace from what we were when we were testing yesterday. Um, but already in 20 odd minutes, I think he's put on about, 30, about 22 kilometres. So we're well on target if we keep on going to where we're going. OK, I mean, you just mentioned the weather. I'm just looking around the course now. I mean, when the sun comes out, you can sort of see it bouncing off the wet patches. This, this could affect the chances of the world record, couldn't it, really? It could do, yeah. If, um, if we do get rain, then obviously the cat is going to go substantially slower than what we anticipate, really. But uh, we're praying, you know, that it's going to stay with us. OK. Um, and you know, what do you think of the course? I mean, you, you're all from Kent. Why did you choose to come up to Teesside to, uh, to attend this world? Uh, well, I've got to go on Teesside Cat in a uh, good friend of mine for over 20 years. Uh, and the track itself, I've been up here a few times in the past with race various things. It's just the fastest track in the world uh, and the longest. So that was the main reason for, you know, coming to Teesside Cat for the, for the event. OK, thank you. I'm also joined by uh, Bob Pope, who organises and runs the facilities the uh, track here. Good morning, Bob. Good morning. So how do you feel, obviously, this world record attempt taking place on Teesside at this track? I'm delighted. It just means there's another recognition of the effort we're putting. We've been trying hard to bring this track into national recognition, and people like Joe coming up here just um, confirms that our investment's been well worthwhile. I mean, would you agree that facilities up here are better than the track in this location? The track is incomparable with any circuit in the, in the UK. The actual length is the longest kart circuit in the world. But um, we just say working on it, we're continually improving, and hopefully we'll bring more national championships and more world record attempts to Teesside. Brilliant. I mean, obviously, this, this could actually put Teesside and actually this course on the map, couldn't it, if it, if it goes ahead and we break a world record here today? Yeah, that's what we're, we're just trying to do. We hope Joe and his team um, just keep up. Hope, hope, 
<laughs> the weather stays fine because if it rains, we, we do this track is very slippery and it can actually put the lap times down by about 10 seconds a lap. So they're up against it if the weather starts to um, go a bit wrong for them. Okay, I mean, you've been in this business quite a while. Um, you you organise Le Mans, haven't you, in the past? I'm the um, promoter of Le Mans 24 hour race. I've been for 18 years, that's a car race. And also run a British 24 hour. I've been running it here in Teesside for about 10 years. But again, it's quite strange. No one around here knows what we do. Please come along and see us because you're all welcome to come and have a go and uh, find out what it's like to go karting in Teesside. It brings out his eyes. He's got uh, blue metallic eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wearing a nice little blue number. <laughs> He's got some lovely suede blue, um, well, pumps or boots. Yeah. You call them? Uh, blue racing shoes. Uh, <laughs> race, racing, racing shoes. Racing underwear. We've even got a navy blue uh, t-shirt on underneath. It's all matching. Yes, I will. I will not show anything else. But there we are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not au fait with the lingo, I'm afraid. <laughs> this is going to go on for 24 hours, so it, sh it should be finishing at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning, so these guys are going to be pretty tired by then. I'm assuming that, uh, Joe, you'll be getting three hours sleep at a time? Um, if I'm, if, yeah, if I'm lucky. Normally I, I can't sleep because you, you get so involved. If you're not in the car, you're you're doing something else, helping with the mechanics or refueling. So it's quite a special time. But, you know, we're, we're, all the team is very, very used to this. All the guys are used to doing 24-hour races. So I don't think we'd have a problem. I say it's the weather more than anything else. But, you know, I'm looking forward to getting in the car and having a blast for us. Well, I've, I've, know. Yeah, I've, I've just sat in the car and had my photo taken, but to be honest with you, I don't think I'm a very large person and I couldn't really, yeah, it was hard to fit my palm into the seat, so I don't know how these guys were. <laughs> I'll take you. <laughs> <laughs> it's very small, I'd have to kind of sit and crouch on the floor. <laughs> Thank you, thanks very much. No, seriously, you want to come have a go? Next up, for his first stint, Tom Huxtable. Simon the Machine Rudd was the third driver to take to the track for his first stint. Falls, Tom Huxtable finishes his stint and is taken over by Joe Flay. Thank you. 
plus into the event, uh, things are going uh, pretty well. We seem to have got over the problem with the uh, first engine expiring after five hours. We've uh, asked the drivers to respect a, a lower rev limit, which we hope will um, get the engines lasting a little bit longer. We're also uh, changing the fuel mixture, so there's a little bit more oil in the, uh, in the mix, which once again should, should help the uh, engine longevity. Um, so far, the projected distance is around about the 2,200 kilometres, which is very, very good. However, the weather is likely to uh, change things a little bit. Um, forecast is absolutely lousy with uh, masses of rain at some stage in the, uh, in the early hours of the morning. So, um, fingers crossed, it looks all right for the time being. We want to get to uh, make hay while the sun shines, or while it isn't pouring with rain. And um, fingers crossed, we can. Uh, get the bulk of it out of the way before the uh, rain arrives. Stop, can you see this? Joe Flay walks down to some of the spectators who have come out to visit us and to see how we're getting on. Yeah. I'll get it some yeah, some sometime, yeah. yeah. Can you tell us what's going on? Um Simon's just been out and done about 25 minutes of his stint and it appears um, we've, well, we've definitely got a problem with the engine um, going down the hill um, he's changed, changed gears to literally no power so whether we've done a, done a piston ring I'm not quite sure yet but we're just doing a quick engine change which should take about five minutes uh, and then we'll get Simon back out and then we'll get strip the other engine and find out what the situation is thank you um, we don't have a we don't have a passing tip on this side, so it's just be um, yeah, just get a Just be careful of the chassis on the right hand side. It's got no on the right. Yeah, this side. Yeah, there's that bump over there that's going to be. Yeah, we'll stay off very right to the left. Take it that way. Yeah. Well, can't really. Oh, you yeah, do a little bit yeah. more fuel. Yeah. Russell Crowe talking to some of the spectators who have been with us for hours watching what we're doing. Uh, he's just updating them on our latest problem with one of the engines. 
great to see all these kids come down. Maybe they'd be inspired. We knew the bad weather was coming, the heavens opened and the track would stay wet until the end of the race. This caused more problems and some of the lights went out and we were unable to get them back on. The left hander going down the hill was now blind and we had to do it by memory. Simon, what's going on now? Broke it again. What's happening? I broke it again. The engine. The engine. Simon, the bugs, the car's wrecked up. Yeah, whoops. I'm trying to tease them. What's wise? Yeah, I'm going to put them in there. Yeah, I'm going to put them in there. Yeah, I'm going to put them in there. So what exactly happened? Well, we had a gearbox, we had none. And then I burnt my uh, fingers.
it all or rock it. That's it. You on? Rocking. Yeah, bolting. Idea. Oh, actually, no, it's going to run the hour anyway. So you can't do any more than an hour. So. finally broken. The Joe Flay passes the celebration flags of the team. Um, but yeah, chuffed. Really happy. Oh, the, the team have been absolutely fantastic. The um, uh, Bob and Peter have been working their asses off, especially well, given the uh, number of engine swaps and whatever, and engine rebuilds we've had to do. Um, yeah, they've been absolutely fantastic. Really, really pleasing. The, the drivers have done a good job. Um, looked after the cart nicely, and uh, yeah, it's uh, it's done bloody well. So I'll let you go on with your celebrations. Obviously, there's <laughs> more time to go, yeah? Yeah, yeah, well, hopefully we're going to set a decent target now. <laughs> nice one. Catch up with you later. Cheers. Joe Floyd just secured the... Uh, Joe, just secured the 24-hour world record uh, for cards. Tell us how you feel. Fantastic. Um, it was really, really nice touch coming around in the pitch black uh, and seeing all those flags waving from the guys and the mechanics and the drivers. Just fantastic. Yeah, really was good. Excellent. Very pleased. <laughs> no, no, it's just been unbelievable to be honest. The whole thing, I'm, I'm aching. Um, I, I'm really aching to be honest, but um, you know, it's been in and out of the car every sort of you know, uh, hour and a half, two hours, uh, right from nine o'clock this morning. But, it's amazing, amazing organisation. The guys work fantastic mechanics, you know, rebuilding engines, swapping pistons around and all sorts of stuff, just to keep the cart out there and, you know, it's all paid off. Even saying that, um, it's so slippery out there uh, with the rain that we had and being overnight, it just hasn't dried out much weather. So uh, we're doing sort of eight seconds a lap slower than what we were initially, but, you know, we kept it on the yard and no incidents other than the problems that were done it again and keep the test and done it again. Various uh, car team this side of the Rio Grande. <laughs> okay Joe, we'll come back to you a bit later because the car's still out there putting even more laps down and uh, we'll come back to you in the early in the night. Fantastic. Thanks Bill. <laughs> so Tom, you're a world record holder. How do you feel? Oh, you fuck you don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping that someone would throw some money down here and I'd like this year we'll get some sponsorship from the racing.
Simon Rudd gets out of the cart for the last time. Russell Crowe prepares to do the last stint and take the checkered flag at the end of world record run.
onto the straightaway. Into the chicane. And one more lap. And the keep the test will be world record holders for the longest distance ever carried out by a motor powered car. Russell Crowe takes the flag. It's all over. Well done, guys. so hard, especially the mechanics uh, over there, Bob and uh, Pete, they've done a fantastic job keeping it going. Four times they've changed the engine, <laughs> rebuilt it in the uh, in that morning over there. It's been a tremendous effort from them. It's been really well. And very, very good. What's been the toughest part of this for you? Uh, my ribs hurt a bit. <laughs> it's a very bumpy track and my ribs are absolutely killing me after about six hours, but the uh, the rain has helped because it's obviously less grippy and it hurts less. So. So in some ways it's been kinder on us, in other ways it's uh, taken a lot of distance off of it. But uh, yeah, I think the, uh, the bumps and the, uh, the physical nature of the track was uh, pretty sad. That's great, thank you. We've got some spare ribs, right? Did you the records being smashed? Yeah. How many do you know? Uh, 350 kilometres. So it was 1,706 chapters, and the total amount, I believe, was 300, I think 358 laps we've done. We were probably going to finish two seconds ago, but 358 laps. So we completely ended up with that. And you did that, Oliver did that quite early on in the morning as well, didn't you? Yes, uh, we actually beat the lap um, record at 20 past three this morning. So the flags have come up for the second time. Cool. They were open to the finish. Did you do that bit again? Because it does finish when it passed forward. Did you do that bit again? Yeah, 20, 20, past, 20 past four. Um, so, so the flags came out and uh, yeah, we, we, we've done it for 20 past four. And obviously everything we've done between then and now is icing on the cake really. But yeah, and just a fantastic event. And, you know, my hats off to all the guys. So just got so Thanks, you too. Could just get your name for That's great. So, Tom, how are you feeling right now? Uh, I feel myself, really. Um, a bit tired. <laughs> <laughs> Quite uh, worn out on my upper body, but apart from that, not too bad. What was the tough bit for you? Uh, just in the dry running early on, it's really physical to drive it. I did a, a stint on new tyres and it was really hard work. Um, and then in the rain, just concentrating, just keeping it on the surface. So the problems, you know, with the stay in the wait for the whole 24 hours and like uh, We've all had a lot of practice of that, so uh, we're, we're, we're used to the tough and the stuff that's been doing as well, so we haven't had a problem with that. Tom, thanks. Come on, you. Yeah. Trouble yeah. Trouble. Yeah. 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 Look at that, eh? How did you feel when you found out that you'd all smashed the record? Uh, I was asleep when we did it, but um, I woke up and they told us we did it, we've done it, so yeah, it was quite a good feeling. We could go out the next couple of stints and realise that it could just, you know, just keep going, and we'll get any pressure on us. That was the last feeling, yeah. Did you think you'd always do it in your mind? I did, I knew we could do it, I knew we had the team and the 
park the dirt and like, the track, it's an awesome track. Um, we just need to rely on the weather and it held off for us and it was quite lucky really. Obviously it's good to, to smash a record, but also to smash the record in England to an English team. Yeah, yeah, you know, I think it was the Americans that set in Ireland last time, so we like to bring it back to England. Yeah, yeah. Good stuff. That's one. Yeah, well, it's only really not that 77. I did a 47 Thank you, good something in the rain. If I was driving it in the dryer, I'd have been in the dryer. I'd have been in the dryer. I'd have been in the dryer. I'll probably be with him. 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 I'll probably be with Hi there, Matthew. Yep, we have had the lap of honour. We've had the donuts, the um, didn't quite go off the We want a sketch of that one for now, we'll tell you about that later. But uh, have we done it, Joe? Have we succeeded? I'm saying we like I've been here all night, because I haven't. Yes, we've done it. Um, we comprehensively smashed the world record. So keep the test at Teesside Cartier, and now officially the world record holders for distance for a motor boat car. Thousands, Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've done 1,705 laps. Uh, a lap is 1.2 kilometres, just over. Uh, that equates to 2,057.935 kilometres, which beats the existing record by 348 kilometres. Yay! <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. Um, we're all completely elated. We've had so much support, um, not just from the mechanics, but from Bob Pope of Teesside Karting. He's laid on um, food for us. He's obviously laid the track on as well. Um, so, you know, fan fantastic. Thanks to everybody. I really, really appreciate it everything that everybody has done for us and the guy credit card joke and credit card they are they look a bit tired at the minute to be honest have you got some sleep in you can't put your hand up on the radio <laughs> <laughs> how did you sleep when there was all that noise going on uh, it was quite a physical um, event, you know what I mean, so I got some sleep in a nice warm quarter cabin while they was working and changing engines and that, so... Are you from Stockton, he's asking? Where's that? <laughs> no, no, I'm not. No, no. I'm thinking not then. <laughs> I'm not sure, I think probably Bob, you uh, Joy, you Bob, but uh, Joe, you probably get uh, your Guinness Book of Records for your Christmas present, do you? Hopefully, yeah, I'll get my wife to frame it for me, that'll be nice. But uh, yeah, hopefully, it's a fantastic Christmas present. Um, it's something that we set out to achieve, and we, you know, we've done it, and all credit to everybody who was involved, really. It's just fantastic. Yay! Now, a world record attempt is taking place this evening on Teesside. The Equipe Vitesse Carters are hoping to shatter the 24-hour distance record for motor-powered karting. Well, the team are the most successful karting side in Europe, having won the prestigious Le Mans 24-hour event four times in the past six years. 
Well, our reporter Claire Wilson is with them now. Claire, how are they doing? Not bad, but I must say the weather has taken a turn for the worse here, but 1,709.9 kilometres in 24 hours is still the record to beat set by Carters in Ireland. The team here have been trying to break that record since 9 o'clock this morning. Joining me now is Phil Rudd, one of the organisers of the team. Obviously with the conditions, how are things going? Yeah, it's going well. Um, we've had a couple of hiccups. Uh, we've had an engine pack up on us and the weather's turned a little bit bad for the worst. So that looks like it's grinding up. But no, we're on track, we're on track to, to, to beat the record at the moment. Now you're all from Kent, aren't you? So why come to Teesside to do this? Well, I think it's uh, the, probably one of the best circuits in the country. Um, it's certainly the fastest, certainly the longest, and for this sort of event it's, uh, it's fantastic. And of course the weather. Thanks very much Phil. Well, joining me now are two of the drivers of the four men team. And this is Russell Crow. Russell, why come, to, why come here? And obviously you've got so much experience, but why actually come here to do this? It's, as Phil said, it's a, it's a fantastic venue, it's a great big long straight, it's very, very fast circuit, it's perfect for this kind of uh, event. And um, the 24 hours, we've got masses of experience doing 24 hour racing, we've been to Le Mans many, many times, we've won the Le Mans 24 hour karting of times, a 24 hour record seemed perfect, so that's what we're here for. Right, Joe, do you think you're going to do it? I think we will, yeah. Um, obviously the, way the rain's going to play a bit of a factor, um, but hopefully it'll be good to us, but we're well on target at the moment, we really are. That's great, well good luck to you all, and we'll find out just how they're doing tomorrow, and we'll let you know on tomorrow night's programme. I look forward to that. Well, more sport news. <laughs> well, more good news because the team have set a new world record in 24-hour karting. The Equipe Vitesse Carters finished at 9 o'clock this morning at Teesside Autodrome near Middlesbrough. Despite the rain and four engine changes, they broke the record in the early hours and they managed to add a further 358 kilometres, taking it to 2,067 kilometres. Well done. Well done, boys. A keeper test, world record holders, for the greatest distance carried out by a motor powered car in 24 hours. Now that all our oh, no, now that all our internal organs are back in their standard positions and everybody's arms are functioning correctly again, I thought it would be a good time to put what we've just achieved into perspective and to thank everybody who was involved. My first comment must go to the organiser and driver of this mammoth task, Russell Crowe, who took the idea from conception through to the world record in just three short months. The time, effort and considerable money that Russell has put into this effort is staggering to say the least. I would like to take this opportunity to thank him for allowing me to part of this world record-breaking team. To put this record into perspective, not only did Russell select an engine that nobody had used before on a cart in the UK, but had to design all the mounting points and all the ancillary items to make it work. To the best of my knowledge, this is also the first time a gearbox cart has been used for a 24-hour run. My thanks also go out to the other Keep for Test drivers that are now part of motorsport history. Simon and Machine Rudd and the awesome Tom Huxtable, all who performed as real professionals in all aspects of their duties, both as drivers and ambassadors in front of the considerable press that was with us over the two days. Our two mechanics, Bob Scott and Pete Hammond, these guys worked flat out for the complete duration of the event with no time for anything other than total dedication in keeping the world record attempt alive. After numerous setbacks, Bob finally getting some sleep on the drive back home after some 36 hours of enforced insomnia. You guys are also the stars of this achievement. Many thanks to Phil Rudd who played a vital role in documenting the attempt on paper, still photos and the video camera. I hope that the scars to your elbows and back are healing nicely after you fell off a cart whilst attempting to feel, film the on-board camera, on the on-board footage. I have to add that I was driving at the time and may have taken the last corner a little bit too quick. Seeing Phil rolling across the tarmac at great speed while still holding the camera off the ground to prevent, prevent any damage was sheer commitment. Not so many thanks to the official who tried to dampen our enthusiasm to, in trying to get the event stopped due to the little old lady three miles away who read of the attempt in the newspaper and thought it might disturb her beauty, her beauty sleep. Thank you to big Tony Trot who made the effort to come up to Teesside to eat all the Chinese food that had been laid on by the circuit. 
told you we love you. Thank you to the hundreds of people from the Teesside area who took the time and trouble to visit us and to show your support, especially those, those families that stood for hours in the pouring rain on Thursday evening. Very special thank you to my, my great friend Bob Pope of Teesside Casting who provided the track, the staff support and great encouragement. We could not have done it without your help. For the record, we covered 1,704 laps of the 1.2 mile circuit, which equates to 2,056.7 kilometres, beating the old record by 347.7 kilometres, despite having one more corner to negotiate and 10 hours of wet weather driving. Each pilot completed the same amount of driving, changing every 45 minutes in the dry and every 55 minutes in the wet. Approximately 24,000 gear changes, four engine changes, 240 litres of fuel, countless containers and two-stroke oil, three sets of slicks and three sets of wet weather tyres, one set of brake pads, unlimited amounts of enthusiasm and dedication. It's now official. The record was officially ratified by the Guinness World of Records on Tuesday 22nd of October 2007. Life is not measured by the amount of breath you take, but measured by what takes your breath away. <laughs>